you, you mentioned using lots of data uh, to train models. Obviously, data privacy is a, is a you know a paramount um, concern. How does data privacy come into play uh, in in terms of using it to to train models? Yeah, and and so you know every organization I, I've worked with. Um, if you're training AI, you're, you're working with often live data or, or some type of data, and really you have to be the guardian of that data. And so when, when I think around data, one of the most important things that comes to my mind is PII or personal identifiable information. Um, these are things like names, addresses, social security numbers, um, bank statements, and any number that would be, you know, you wouldn't want getting out into the wild. And so one of the really great things about AI is that traditionally AI and, and machine learning in general is that machines don't really care about the individual as much as, as you or I would. Machines are really interested in the patterns. Um, and this could be anything from if you're trying to make a filter that distinguishes a dog versus cat, it doesn't care about the individual dogs, it cares about what do dogs look like as a whole? What do cats look like as a whole? Um, and relating that now to, let's say, the financial world, you're trying to make a model to understand if uh, someone's capital gains are um, scanned correctly or incorrectly from a document. Um, you don't really care about that individual's capital gains. You kind of care about the relationship of the different numbers that they might have on a document and how those would refer to a distribution of numbers um, of capital gains that you might see across a whole population of, of thousands of people. And so what's great about this is that those, those PII numbers that we talked about, your, your social security numbers, your names, et cetera, a lot of those don't even need to be taken into account while doing, um, while doing any type of machine learning. Essentially what you need is a unique identifier. And so one of the original, initial things that we do in a lot of our research is we, we pull out names, we'll pull out um, social security numbers, and we'll do what's called obfuscating them. So a lot of the names, um, we have a lot of uh, our, our tax returns actually correspond to Jack and Jill. They're, they're a married couple. And so we, we switch out those names. And now we have a joint return between them. Social security numbers, we'll keep the same format, but it might be like 111-22-3333 or something like that just because those numbers don't really matter as much to us. So we can guard data in that way. Um, and then the second way that we're looking at data is we're taking data in, so we might take in raw numbers uh, on a tax document, um, but those numbers aren't being stored by the model. At the end of the day, the model is going to create an equation from those. It's going to think about statistical distributions. The raw individual information per user isn't being taken into account by the model. It's understanding what are relationships and, and things that we see um, in aggregate around a population? And so what's really great about this is at the end of the day, you get your model, which really is this set of equations. And, and those set of equations explain potentially a single field on a tax document or a way that language appears on certain tax documents, et cetera. Um, but they are devoid of individual information. It's all aggregate information. And so we take all of that kind of personal information and individual information, it comes together and it creates this model that is more than the sum of its parts. And the best part about it too, is that it can't really be broken apart into those individuals information. And so the information of an individual is kept safe along the whole process. So the data is anonymized, the, the, the machine doesn't care what the, the dogs or, or the cat's name or, or address is.